Hey guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this flower design which was designed by me. I know some of you guys have been waiting for this design for a while. I'm sorry it took, uh, I'm sorry it took me a while to put out the tutorial. I've been kind of busy with school and things if you know, you know. But this is the design, so it's a daisy or it's supposed to be a daisy. This is like the final version of the design and the design I'll be showing you how to make, like the version I'll be showing you how to make today. Um, we do have some earlier versions here. This is like the first version. And I saw some people saying that they liked- oh, there's a hair on my desk. Ugh. I saw some people saying that they liked this version of the daisy better. I didn't, I kind of like this one better because we can see all the petals. But, um, yeah, there's different versions. These are- these two are the exact same as, um, the other one. The only thing is, for some reason, I accidentally glued this guy's face a little too high, but... Other than that... Yeah. So, uh... Yeah. I think these two are like the best examples of this design. I don't know what happened to the face on this guy, but he just looks kind of weird. And this one was my first try at it, but yeah. But yeah, this is a pretty quick and easy design, so... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Every- I swear, I say this a lot recently, but every time I haven't filmed a tutorial in a while, I come back to film, I'm like, what was I supposed to be saying? completely forget. Um, I guess the difficulty of this design, this design isn't super difficult. I think it's definitely one of those that lands in the middle where it's like, it's not for beginners, but it's definitely like not hard. It kind of lands in the middle. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. This design, I don't think it takes too many bands. Um, I haven't done the band count as of when I'm filming this, but if you're really concerned about the band count, you can always go to check down in the description below and there'll be the band count, the pattern, everything. So... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, so we're gonna get started. Uh, to make this design, of course, you're gonna need some bands and the color you want your flowers. I'm doing my colors a little different today, which might be a mistake because I don't want to throw anyone off, but um, for the middle of my flower, I'm gonna be using blue. And then for my petals, I'm gonna be using two different kinds of orange. And then the stem will be green. Um, of course, you're gonna want a hook. I'll be using my double-ended hook today. You definitely don't need a double-ended hook, but uh, I just really like this hook. And we're only gonna be using one end of it, so you can use a crochet hook, rain balloon hook, whatever hook you have. And um, yeah, you're also gonna need a C-clip or just something to mark your rose with. You can use a C-clip, an S-clip, a G-clip, whatever kind of clip. You can even use a paper clip. It's just something to mark where you start and end rose. I'll be using this green C-clip today just because it's what I had. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So we're gonna get started. Um, there, there's this hair that keeps coming back. Oh, I swear, ow. Um, but yeah, so I hope you decide to make the daisy, but we're gonna get started. Uh, just one quick thing before we get into the tutorial though, because if I don't explain what happened to my pinky, I already know I'm gonna get the comments of, why is your pinky in a band-aid? If you've been keeping up with my recent videos, I injured my pinky. Um, it doesn't hurt anymore, but I am like missing half a nail. So just so you guys didn't have to stare at it up close and personal, I put a band-aid on it. But yeah, nothing's technically wrong with my pinky anymore. It's just, it doesn't look very pleasant to look at. Um, this week, actually, half the nail just kind of came off. Because before, it kind of looked like I still had my nail, but there was like some weird bruising under it. And I was like, it's fine. Um, because they said it was gonna look funky for a while when it happened, when I got injured. But, yeah, I'm also taking out my bands, I'm not just talking, what the heck. Because I know some people in my comments are always like, Oh my god, Ginger, you talk so much! And I'm like, sorry, but... I'm getting my bands out, so... I'm doing something, but... But yeah, so, this week, I was doing something, I forgot what I was doing! And, um, half of my pinky just kind of lifted. And I cut it off because I was like, I don't want this getting stuck on something and then ripping off my entire pinky nail. So uh, I kind of only have half a pinky nail right now. And it sounds worse than it is. Like, honestly, my pinky doesn't really hurt at all. It's just, there's half a nail missing. So fun times. Also, I have a cut on my knuckle. I don't know where it came from. My hands are a disaster. <laughs> honestly, honestly, all my hands are a disaster because I also have this mark on my finger. It's also all my left hand. Um, I don't know what I've been doing. The finger was when I was building a canvas yesterday. I got pinched and then that marks on my hand. Knuckle was also from building a canvas. I'm just getting injured over here. Not actually. Besides my left hand, everything else is fine. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to get started. This That was a long intro. I get rambly sometimes. 
but we're gonna get started so if you don't know already the pattern it is in the description if you want to follow along with that but I'll also be obviously as a tutorial walking you through every step so to get started we're gonna get the color we want for the center of our flower so if you're wanting to make one like this that's the yellow in this guy so whatever color you want for that for me today I'm using blue I just decided to mix it up because I have a bunch of flowers with yellow centers so we are going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So we're going to go one, two, three. And then we're going to take a band. We're going to pull it through the entire cat band, so all three loops. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. And then we're going to push this back loop over the front loop. Like that. And now we're going to go back into that cat band. So we're going to go through the whole cat band, so all three loops. We're going to pull a band through just the cap band, so not this last loop here. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. We're going to push the back one over the front one, and then we're going to push this loop from last time over as well. Like that. And we're going to repeat that thing we just did um, four more times, so we have six stitches in this cap band in total. And I'll show you what I did again. So once again, we're going to go through the cap band. We're going to pull a band through just the cat band, so not this last loop. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. We're going to push this back loop over the front loop. And then we're going to push this loop from last time over as well. And we'll just repeat that three more times. So through the cat band. Pull a band through both ends on our hook. Back one over the front one. Loop from last time. Oop. And don't let go of your bands. And I just need to do that two more times. one and two so if you don't know you ha if you have six um, stitches in your cap band or not you can always count and the way I count is you're gonna start by counting the loop on your hook so you'll this one will be one so we have one two three four five and six so we're just counting these um, loops on the side here but you always start by counting the one on your hook so one two three four five and six so once you've made sure you have six loops, instead of going back into the cat band, you're going to go in through this first loop here. And then you're going to pull a band through just the loop, both ends back on our hook, back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And then this is the one we'll be putting our C-clip on to mark where we start and end. Like that. So that was the first bit, and honestly the first bit's always the hardest bit, so it should be pretty good from here on out. Uh, but yeah. So, for the next step we're going to be increasing everything, and if you don't know what that means, that just basically means that every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And I'll show you what an increase is. So this first loop already has one stitch in it, but basically an increase is going to have two stitches in each loop, so we need to go back in and put another one. So we're going to go back into that same loop. We're going to pull a band through, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, push the loop from last time over as well. And it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see that there's two stitches in this one loop, and that's an increase. So I'll show you again. So we're going to go through this loop, we're going to make a stitch, we're going to go back in, do another stitch, do another stitch, and that'll be our increase. So we're just going to keep doing that for every single loop all the way around because we're increasing everything, so every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. So I'll show you again in the next one, so you just go into the next loop, you put one stitch in, Go back and then do another, and that'll be your increase. So at the end of this row, you should be at 12 loops, and we'll count, but I just wanted to remind you. But yeah. So we're just going to increase uh, until we get to the C-clip. I'm also sorry if my finger is kind of in the way. It's always hard to keep them out of the way at the start just because it's so tiny. But I'm trying my best. So once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it, and then you'll take the C-clip off of this loop, and then move it up onto the new um, stitch that's on your hook. 
So now if we count around, we should be at 12 loops. So you'll start by cutting the one on your hook. So you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So that was it for that. Um, for the next row, we're going to just do one row of single stitches. So one row normal. We're just going to do be doing like one stitch in every loop. So at the end of this row, we should still be at 12 loops. And I'll show you what a single stitch is because I know we haven't technically done one yet. I don't know. But yeah. So yeah, we're just going to do one row normal. And all that means is we're just going to be doing one stitch in every loop until we get to the C-clip. And that's all we're doing. No, this is kind of unrelated, but I don't know if it's just me or did the lighting like work out really good in this tutorial? I always like struggle so much with the lighting in my videos if you guys don't know. And I don't know, something about this tutorial, it just looks nice. Maybe it's the time of day I'm filming it, I'm not sure. I can never guarantee this lighting again. <laughs> because of school, I always have to film at like such odd hours, but um, I'm filming this Labor Day weekend, so I have an extra day to do homework and stuff, so I have time to film, which is nice. I'm back in school and it's been good, but it definitely keeps me very busy. Anyways, once we get to the C-clip, we're gonna make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and we'll just move it up. So we'll take it off that loop that is, it's on and move it up onto the loop that is on our hook. So now, if we count, we should be at 12 loops still. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's pretty much it for this middle bit. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our petal color. For a second, I thought I had blue bands on my pinky. I did not know. And then I was like, oh, it's my, it's my bandaid. Um, Anyways, my brain is not here today. I've already, like, I'm filming this in the afternoon again. Um, I used to film tutorials in the morning, but ever since going back to school, I have to film in the, in the odd hours of the day because <laughs> homework obviously comes first. So I already have a whole, I ha like, I had a whole day of doing homework. So it's already been a day, <laughs> but I'm glad I had time to film because I've been wanting to give you guys this tutorial because I love my flower design. It's just so cute and it's little. I actually made the cutest tiny thing today. Maybe I'll show it at the end of this tutorial. And I am picking a band, so if you're wondering why there's this pause, it is because I'm arranging bands in the order I want them on my flower on my finger. I feel like I always like doing this like blue and like orange combo. It just looks so nice. So. Um, first things first, this first band is technically the wrong color, so we're gonna un we're gonna wanna undo that last stitch we did. So we're just gonna undo it. Don't let everything come undone. If a couple loops come undone, just re-loop them. But we're gonna switch to our petal color, so we're just gonna redo this stitch, but we're gonna slip stitch. So we're gonna pull- instead of pulling this band through just the loop, we're gonna pull it through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on our hook and then push the back one over the front one. And the only reason we did this is because we're flipping color. Um, we pretty much don't do this anywhere else in the design. Well, actually, we do it one more time in this design. But uh, we just needed to flip to our petal color. So now we're actually going to begin making the petals. And it's definitely not as hard as it looks. I feel like if you look at this at first, you're like, oh my god, what is happening? But it's actually not too bad. So I'll show you what to do. So... The first thing we're gonna do, and this is gonna count as our single stitch right here, so this one will be our single stitch, and this next one's gonna be our first petal. So to make a petal, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain up one, so we're just gonna pull a band through, put both ends back on our hook, and then we're going to be putting five stitches in this chain. So we'll pull another band through, both ends back on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And that one will be our first stitch in this chain. So we're going to go ahead and do four more stitches in this chain. So you just pull a band through just the chain. Back one over the front one. Loop from last time. We'll go ahead and do that three more times. And then once you're pretty sure you have five loops in your chain, you can kind of see it too, like I can tell that there's one, two, three, four, and five. 
we're gonna go on and move on to the next um loop wait <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it, I made one of these yesterday to make sure I knew how to make it for the tutorial, but then I was like, hold up, what are we doing? Do I know what we're doing? No. <laughs> That's a joke, I know what we're doing. Um, I'm just double checking. Hold up. I'm sorry. I always hate when there's these awkward pauses in my videos, but... What the heck? Okay, I do know what we're doing. If not, I'm just gonna go with it, and if it goes wrong, I'll edit this bit out. So we're gonna go back into this same loop that has a chain in it, and we're gonna slip stitch, so we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one. Then in the next loop, we're gonna do a single chain. Not a single chain, a single stitch, sorry. So we're gonna do a single stitch in the next one, and then on this next loop here, we're gonna do another pedal. So once again, we'll chain up one, and then we'll put five stitches in this chain. So we'll pull a band through just the chain, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over. And then we'll go ahead and put four more stitches in this chain. And I need to pick up more bands. Yeah, I always think it's funny when I have to figure out what the heck I did because like sometimes I, in loom designs I do some crazy stuff and then I'm like I don't even know what I did. I'm like hold up, what the heck was I thinking? I think it's always funny whenever I have to write down my patterns because I'm literally trying to figure out what the heck like past me did to make the design. But yeah, I think I remember I, I made this flower a couple days ago because I was like I want to make a tutorial for it but I honestly don't remember how to make it so... I do know what I'm doing. I made one recently, but I don't know. I, I feel like I always just second guess, my, second guess myself in tutorials. Because I know what I'm doing, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I have picked up enough bands now, so I'm going to finish putting our chains. I think I need one more. So let me make sure I have five. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then once again, after you chain, put um, five stitches in this chain, you're gonna go back into that same loop that has the chain in it, or like the pedal in it, I guess. You're gonna go into that same loop and we're gonna slip stitch. So we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook and then push the back one over the front one. And then we're gonna go into the next loop. We're gonna go ahead and just do a single stitch. And then on the next one, we're gonna do another pedal. So we're just gonna repeat the whole process for the pedal. And I'm not gonna explain it because I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory but you just chain up one you put five stitches in that chain and then we'll double check to make sure we have five then we go back into that same loop we're gonna slip stitch so you pull a band through everything on your hook put both ends back on your hook push the back one over the front one then we'll do a single chain and then we start the process again, so we'll start with another petal. Like that. And I need to pick up more bands once again. So yeah. Man, I've really missed looming though. Um, this is... I guess I was about to say it's unrelated, but I'm literally filming a loom tutorial. Like, it's totally related to what we're doing. Um, but I've been pretty busy with school. I haven't been able to loop as much as I like. And then even when I was at home for break, when I had a, I had like a two week break between my summer courses and my fall ones, but I was just hanging out with my family a lot. So I haven't really had a lot of time just to like loom by myself and make things. But this weekend I actually had some time to just do the things I like and like make, um, I guess just loom. Cause it's always nice. I, like, I definitely miss looming a lot whenever I don't have a chance to do it for a while. And I feel like that's how I've been this week, it's just been like, I've been making things and I'm like, oh my god, I miss this so much. But, um, fortunately school comes first, but 
yeah, it's it's nice to be looming again. And it's nice that I had time to loom this weekend because like I said, I didn't just make, like I'm not just making these tutorials this weekend, I also made some other stuff that I'm excited about. So yeah. Okay, so we are ready to continue our petals. So I'm just gonna continue putting stitches in this chain until there's five. I needed three more. Okay, so there's five stitches in that chain. So we'll go ahead and go back into that same loop. Slip stitch, so we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, then push the back one over the front one, go into the next one, do a single stitch, And then on this one here, we'll do a, we'll do another petal. So we'll chain up one, and then we'll be putting five stitches in this petal. Okay, and once again, once you finish putting the five stitches in the petal, you'll slip stitch on the same loop. So go back into the same loop, pull a band through everything. Basically just do a slip stitch. Then we'll do a single chain in the next one. And then on this last blue loop here, we'll, here, we'll do this our last petal. Once again, I need to pick up more bands. <laughs> I really like the color of the flower though. I hadn't done a different color center yet because I've just been doing yellow centers because I don't know when you think of daisies you just think of I don't know I've been making classic daisies I guess but I decided to mix it up for this flower but yeah I'm excited though because after I finish filming this video I'm gonna go skating with one of my friends so yeah if you don't know I roller skate which is I feel like I feel like no one expects that from me for some odd reason like if you meet me in real life you don't know and then I'm like yeah I roller skate sometimes and I've actually gotten pretty good at it like I can go forward I can kind of I can go backwards pretty well as well I can kind of stop I've been learning a couple tricks I can moonwalk so yeah I've been having fun doing roller skating as well and I have some friends here with me uh, on campus that skate as well so we meet up like once a week to all skate and it's really fun so yeah I'm excited to go skating after this but I was also really excited to film the tutorial today because I feel like I always, I've been saying this in a lot of my tutorials lately, but I, I really miss it. And I've been like brainstorming ideas recently to be on my channel more when I'm in school. And I think a live stream might happen soon. Um, I'm gonna look at all my school schedules and see when makes the most sense to go live. But I think I'm gonna go live here on YouTube again at some point this month in September. Which would be really exciting. I also always find it terrifying, but you know, whatever. Anyways. So, once you finish this petal, we're gonna go in through this first loop here. And actually, no, sorry. So once you finish the petal, don't forget to go into that same loop and then slip stitch. And then after that, we'll just go into this one that has a C-clip on it, make a single stitch. And we can actually go ahead and take the C-clip out at this point. And I, wait, do we take it out? I'm pretty sure we take it out. So, the next step is we are going to make these petals a little bit bigger because as you can probably tell, they're kind of tiny. So we are gonna do another row just on the petals. And I am reading my pattern to make sure I know what the heck is going on. <laughs> Okay, I do know what's going on. So what we're basically gonna do is we're just gonna do single stitches across the tops of these petals and then we're gonna tie them off. So we're just gonna do single stitches across the top of these. And it's pretty easy to tell where the petal ends because we slip stitched. So once you see that slip stitch, and you can tell which the slip stitch is because as you can see this loop goes into like the bottom part of this loop here. So once you've like single stitched until the slip stitch, actually you're going to want to stop one before the slip stitch so you can tell that this one, make sure you can see, 
So you can tell that this one's in the slip stitch because like it gets tied into that bottom part of that loop here, as you can see. But once you get to that one that's slip stitched, this one, we're gonna go ahead and tie off. So we're gonna pull a band through everything on our hook, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then that pedal will be done. So I'll show you again on the next pedal, but this is pretty much what we're doing for all the pedals, is we're kind of just going across the top and then slip stitching at the end. I feel like the first time I do it is a little confusing, but I'll show you again. And I'm picking up bands again. You can see me picking up bands this time. I don't know why I never pick up bands on camera, but yeah. I'm kind of curious just while I pick up, finish picking up these bands. Do any of you guys have a favorite flower? I feel like if I had to pick a favorite flower, I like the shape of tulips, but like I wouldn't say they're my favorite flower because to me tulips smell a little weird, but like if we're go just if we're just judging based on shape, I have to say I do love I do love tulips, but if you want to let me know what your favorite flower is, not that I'm going to make a design of it, just I'm curious what everybody's favorite flowers is. Um but yeah, once you finish um tying off that last petal, you're just going to go right into the next loop. And then we're going to pretty much do the exact same thing and go across this pedal. I think I technically do skip a loop because I never, I don't think I go into the, hold up, sorry. Um, we do, okay. And you're going to want to start this pedal, this is what I was checking, at the slip stitch. So wherever the slip stitch is, you're going to go through that loop. And you're gonna start the pedal there, and then you're just gonna go once again across all these top loops. Until you get to the one that's slip stitched. You know it's funny because the lighting was so good and now it's getting kinda dark in here. But I am filming at sunset, so. Makes sense. And once again, once we get to the one that is slip stitched, I went one too far again. But once we get to the pedal that is slip stitched, and once again I can tell because this, this loop is going into the bottom part of this next stitch, you can kind of see that. We're going to stop. We're going to tie it off. So we're going to pull the band through everything, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. Like that. Okay, I kind of love the colors of this flower. Ugh, like, look at it. And you can kind of see that these petals are doing this weird overlappy thing. That's what we want. So, I'll keep showing you and keep doing all the petals. I'm going to stay on to do all the petals because I feel like the petals are a confusing part. And if you didn't get it the last two times I did it, maybe continuing watching this video and just like really focusing on what my hands are doing because I'm trying my best to explain. I'm also opening my window slightly. I probably should have... I lost my camera to do this, but I was trying to let some more light in. But, yeah. So, yeah, maybe just watching what I do one time and then trying to do it on yours could be helpful. But I'm gonna do my best to explain. So once again, we're gonna start right where we left off. So we tied off, oh, I'm at the wrong spot. So we tied off right here, oh, sorry. Bumping my camera. So we tied off right here. We're gonna go into that next loop, and it should be the one that's the slip stitch, because you can tell that this one's a slip stitch. And the re reason you can tell, if you don't understand what I'm saying by that, and I'll try to show you really well, even though I've showed you a couple times, um, is that this loop is tied into the bottom part of this stitch. Do you see that? And that's how I know that this is the slip stitch. So we're gonna go into the slip stitch, we're gonna go into the loop part of the slip stitch, so not this weird foldy bit, but the loop part. And that is where we're going to start our petal. Like that. And then we just do single stitches across all of these loops. That are like on this top part of the petal. And this part's pretty simple because you just do single stitches across the loops. And once again, we're going to stop. Sorry, my, my colors are out of order. I just noticed I had two next to each other. We don't want that. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so we're just gonna do single stitches across all the loops on top here until we get to that slip stitch. And I'll show you again which one it is in case you're confused. 
Okay, so. I'm gonna stop here because I know that this next loop is the one that I slip stitched on. Because you can see this is this loop is going under and into this band. And that's how I know that's the one that we slip stitched and that's where I'm gonna stop. So I stopped one loop before that. We're gonna go through this loop. We're gonna pull a band through everything. Back one over the front one and pull tight. And that'll be our pedal. So we have three pedals right now. We have three more to go. And it might be looking a little weird at this point and you're like, Ginger, what the heck's going on? It gets better. You just have to do all the pedals. Once we do the back part of the flower, he looks perfect. He's just having an awkward phase. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm picking up bands again, so I'm talking again. I, 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 I shouldn't be so paranoid about that. I know I shouldn't, but I always get comments that are like, stop talking and start explaining. And I'm like, geez, first of all. Um, but yeah, it makes me a little paranoid. I shouldn't let him affect me, but... Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, I know what I was talking about. So, while well, I pick a band. Because, like, the flower looks so weird right now. It just kind of reminds me, because I'm a painter. If you don't know, I'm studying painting in university. And paintings just have some horrible, awkward faces. Like, I swear my paintings don't look good until, like, the last two days I'm working on it. And the whole time I'm like, trust the process, trust the process. Because it just looks so bad. And... Yeah, right now I'm about to start a new painting in my painting class, so it's gonna be a fun week of- I, It looks awkward, I promise it'll get better, like, that's literally sums up my entire- My entire painting journey, such- like, this far is just like, I promise it gets better. <laughs> Anyways, we were right here, and we're gonna keep doing the same thing, so we're gonna come on this first loop here, and it should be the loop that is the slip stitch. I'm just gonna go across the top. Oh yeah, but back to our slight conversation of earlier. Do you guys have a favorite flower? I was actually thinking, I don't know if I said this, I think I thought it, I didn't say it, but I think I actually, no, I did say it. As you guys can tell, I'm kind of tired, but I think I actually did make designs of my two favorite flowers because my favorite flowers, I also love daisies. Like to me, daisies are just cute. Like I've seen daisies in real life before, obviously and they're just so cute like i'm gonna do a bit of explaining real quick um so once again once you get to that last one that goes into the slip stitch you're gonna tie off so you'll just pull a band through everything and tie off and then we'll continue on to the next petal but yeah i think i made designs of my favorite flowers because i think i love daisies and tulips um, I think I like daisies more because daisies do have an okay smell to them like they I don't know I don't like the smell of tulips. I smelled one once before and it was not my favorite thing but Yeah, I do love a good Good daisy So I'm curious what your favorite flowers are Just to know I know another one I always liked is sunflowers. Actually, I like sunflowers, but I remember my grandma's backyard, we used to have this big sunflower, and there was all kinds of bugs in it, and like that's kind of my one memory with sunflowers, so maybe I don't like sunflowers that much. <laughs> yeah, because I just remember seeing all kinds of bugs in the sunflower, and I was like, that is gross. But like, sunflowers in theory, I like those. Once again, once we get to this last loop that goes into the slip stitch, we're going to tie off. And then we keep going. I think I have one pedal left. I don't think I'm going to explain for this last pedal. I'm just going to stay on camera and do it. I need more bands. Oh, yeah, but like I mentioned earlier, I am thinking of going live at some point on this channel. Um, even if you're watching this after... Like when I go live the first time, I think I'm planning to start doing monthly live streams on this channel just as a way for you guys to kind of keep up with me when I'm in school because it is really hard for me to sometimes make tutorials or even like edited videos. Um, and I think live streams could be a fun way for me to talk to you guys, see what designs you want, and just, I don't know, chat. I also think it's interesting because a lot of you guys have been like taking an interest in what I do, which I kind of appreciate because sometimes I do feel like I'm just like this machine that like pumps out designs. And then, I don't know, it's weird, but I, I do appreciate that you guys kind of recognize sometimes like she's a person because sometimes I do just feel like a design machine. 
who makes things. But yeah, so if you want to hang out, I might start doing live streams soon, and it seems like a lot of you did. I put out a poll on my community tab, and I think like 150 some people answered the poll, which is a lot for my community tab. Um, and most of you guys said yes, so I think a live stream could be fun. We can talk about whatever in those live streams. We can talk about looming, we can talk about designs, we can talk about whatever. I really don't care. Um, and if I do go live, I'm definitely not going to go live for like a lot of hours. I'll keep it to one hour, but... Yeah, it's something I'm thinking of doing that I could think could be exciting. Anyways, I think we're done with these petals. Yes. So, that's pretty much it for the petals. Once you tie off the last one, that's that's it. Like, that's just kind of it for the petals. And we're done with the petal color. So you can just toss that aside. And we do kind of just leave these um, slipknot bands just hanging around. So try not to snag them, but they're just going to kind of hang out for a bit. So you're going to want to get your green, um, I'm using this pastel green, because we're going to get started on the stem. And at this point we are like completely out of this, this guy, like as you can see he's kind of just here, the C clips out, we're going to have to like go back in to start the stem. And this design actually comes together pretty quickly, because once we finish up the back, like we're pretty much, it comes together so quickly. Like I love how simple this design is. I can't, I've, I, I've always been a fan of like quick designs. Like even when I used to make filling spookies happy foods, also I'm picking up bands. I feel like I've been chatting a lot in this tutorial. I'm sorry. You can always fast forward if you don't want to hear it. But yeah, even when I used to make like filling spookies designs, I always liked when sometimes she would release a design and it would only be like half an hour. I'd be like, perfect. Like sometimes I just don't have the brains for the commitment of a longer design. Anyways. Get your green, and we're gonna get started on the back here, which I don't know if I showed you, but there is like a back part to this flower. He's not just like naked back there, or like empty, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna be going into like two parts of this flower. So one of the things we're gonna constantly be grabbing is this loop from the petal. So it's like the chain, this one. And the other loop we're always going to be grabbing is the single chain we did after the chain. So, this one. And we're pretty much just going to be grabbing those all the way around until we come back to the start. So like I said, I'm going to start on this petal here, and I'm going to grab the chain part of the petal loop, and just make a stitch on it. Like that. Then, I'm going to come into this single chain here grab it, make a stitch on it. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. And as you can see on the loop, like on the chain, because the next one here I'm gonna grab is the chain, I'm just sliding my band, my hook under these two bands here, and then we just make a stitch on it. And then I can tell this one's the single chain we did, or not the single chain, the single stitch we did. So I'll just slide my hook underneath, make a stitch. And I just keep repeating this all the way around. So we're just grabbing that chain loop, or like the chain uh, pedal stitch, and then the single chain. Like that. We keep going all the way around. And we pretty much just do this until we run out of like things to grab or we'll be almost at the start. But yeah, we're only really grabbing in those two spots so you shouldn't be grabbing anything else. And lucky for me, I kind of use two different colored bands so it's easy for me to see where everything is. But it shouldn't be too bad for you either. This one's a single chain. And then once you get run out of loops to grab or like single chains and like things, you should be back at the first one you did. So we're just gonna make a stitch on this first loop here. And that is where we will put our C clip. <laughs> where did my C clip go? It's right here. Like that. 
So now if we count it around, we should be at 12 loops again. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. Okay, oops, sorry, I went to go grab some things. Also because my camera was about to time out. But now that we've made sure we have 12 loops, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do two rows of single stitches around this. So we're just gonna do two rows normal, so we're just putting one stitch in every loop until we get to the C-clip. And we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And it is kind of annoying because we've got all these tails just kind of getting in our way. But you just kind of got to ignore them, try not to snag them. But we'll tuck them in once the flower back is done. But yeah, we're just doing two rows of single stitches all the way around. And I'm already almost done with my first row. Just doing one stitch per loop. Once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we'll go ahead and move it up. And if you count around, you should still be at 12 loops. I'm going to count at the end of the second row because we have to do two rows normal, and that was one, so we have to go ahead and do one more. So after this row, I'll count to make sure I'm still at 12, but for now, I'm just going to keep going. And yeah. You know, I got up to grab some bands right now. Um, because I forgot to get some of the bands I needed to do the face and stuff. And I am so sore from yesterday. I built a canvas yesterday, which I think I mentioned at the start of this video. And, um, you have to, like, really pull the canvas when you make it to, like, stretch it out and make sure it's stretched all evenly. By the way, we're still doing a row of single stitches, and that is why I'm talking. Um, but yeah, we just have to do... So I built my canvas, but I am so sore today, and I wasn't expecting to be this sore. Like, my arms, I was expecting to be a little sore, because I don't have the strongest arms. But my legs are sore too, and I think it's just from all the stairs at my school. Um, I did research my school before I came here, but I didn't know it had so many stairs, and like, the painting room in my school is on the fourth floor, so... Every day I go up four flights of stairs and then like if I come to the and leave the building a couple times It's four flights of stairs every time I come and go so I definitely get a good amount of stairs and so yeah one of my legs is just so sore today I'm not really complaining. I'm just like I wasn't expecting it to be sore, but yeah, I'm sore And it was funny because I was talking to my sister who also goes to college and she was telling me how she has a bunch of stairs at her school I swear if you go to college just know that there's gonna be a ton of stairs. It's inevitable <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna count to make sure we have 12 loops. So we're just gonna start by counting the one on our hooks. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. So now we're gonna stuff this really quick. So you're gonna wanna get cotton balls or whatever you're gonna use to stuff. I always use cotton balls. You can use polyfill. Uh, I don't know what else you'll stuff them with. Stuffing of some kind. But you're just gonna wanna stuff your flower. I mean, you, for this design, you don't, probably don't have to have to stuff it. I just like stuffing everything. So I'm gonna stuff it. But, yeah. And I actually think that was a perfect amount of stuffing. Cool. So now we're going to close them up. Um, we're pretty much just going to be decreasing everything until it's closed. And we haven't done a decrease yet, so I will show you what a decrease is to the best of my ability. Because this light is not helping, I don't think. Where do you need to be, light? Is that better? Yeah, that's better, okay. Um, but basically all it decreases is you're gonna grab the inside part of one loop and then the back part of the next loop. Like that. And then you'll just make a stitch on that. And that's a decrease. And like I mentioned, we're gonna decrease everything till close, so every single stitch we do this row is gonna be a decrease. So I'll show you again in the next one. I'm really trying to like block the light a, bit, a little bit so you can see better. But you grab the inside part of one loop see back part of the next loop and then you just make a stitch on this and like I said we're just gonna keep doing this all the way around until it's closed so we can honestly take the c-clip out at this point just throw it aside but yeah inside part of one loop back part of the next loop make a stitch and that's a decrease 
It's like really bright right now. That is my light a little too bright. Maybe we should turn it down. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> a little too bright there. But we'll just keep going. And I'm sorry if it's hard for you to see what I'm doing. I'm aware that these are kind of light bands, but hopefully you're doing okay. And we're just gonna decrease until we can't decrease anymore. And I think the next one's gonna be the last one for me. Actually, I can do two more. Green bands. Sweat them some out. That is like way more green bands than we need, but sure. <laughs> So for me, my next decrease is going to be my last one, so I'm going to pick it up like I usually do. And then instead of just pulling a band through just the first two, I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. So I'm going to pull it through everything on my hook, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And then we'll just go ahead and tuck the tail into this flower guy. And I hate tucking tails in on camera, so I'm just going to stick my hook through off camera. But yeah, we're just going to pull this tail into the flower and hide it so no one can see it. And then you should just squish it a little bit and you have the top of your flower. So now the next step we're gonna do is we're just gonna tuck in all these tails that are like hanging around. Um, as you can see, these petals kind of overlap a little bit so I like to just tuck these tails like directly in behind. So like right here, just come up, snag the tail and pull it in. So we're just gonna go ahead and hide all these tails really quick. I'm gonna do it off camera, because if I do it on camera, we'll be here forever. But we're just gonna wanna tuck all these tails in just so they're not in the way anymore. And then we're gonna do the stem. And then believe it or not, after the stem, we're pretty much done. Well, we do add leaves, but it's not, it's not too bad. Ah, just pulled out a bunch of stuffing. Okay, I'm on the last tail. Okay. Cool. So once you tie all the tails in, your flowers should look a little something like this. And I do like to kind of make all the petals like go like into out a little bit. So I usually push them down a bit like that. And then there's the top of our flower. So like I mentioned, the very last thing we have to do is add a stem on this guy. And it's pretty simple. So we're just going to come into the back here and you're just going to want to pick whatever you want the bottom of your flower to be. I think I'm going to go right here. And then we're just going to stitch in a circle four times right here on the bottom. So I'm going to start right here. I feel like my light is still too bright. Chill. Okay. <laughs> we're going to come right here. I'm going to make a stitch. Now I feel like it's not bright enough. Will there be a happy medium? Who knows? Anyways, we're gonna stitch one time right there. Then make another stitch right here. We're basically just gonna make a little circle with four stitches on the bottom here. We're just gonna stitch four times onto the bottom. And then once you've stitched four times, you'll just go back into this first loop here and you're gonna make a stitch. Now, this is a part of the design where you could technically put your C-clip in and then count exactly how many rows I did last time and make the stem like this exact length. But if I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, I usually go by feeling for the stem. Like I just keep going around this until the stem is as long as I want it to be and then I stop. It's pretty simple. Um, in the pattern in the description, I do 10, I do 10? No, I do, 
I do nine rows normal after this, so you could put a C-clip here. You could count around nine rows if you want exactly the same size stem I do. But honestly, you can make the stem however long you feel. And I think for today's tutorial, I could count exactly nine rows and do the stem. I also whacked you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, I could count exactly nine rows for the stem. But I think we're gonna go based on feeling, so I'm just gonna keep going around this stem until it's as long as I want it to be, which I think is a better way to do the stem. But um, like I said, if you wanted an exact amount of how many rows I did, you could put a C-clip in, you can go ahead and do nine rows. And that's about how many I would do if I was counting. But I honestly like it better just to do the stem based on feeling. Worst case, your stem is a little short or long. So, and I mean, if it's short, I assume it's because you liked it that short, because you can make it however long you want, so. Yeah, I like to do the stem just based on feeling. I just counted how many rows because I know some people are like, no, exactly how many rows did you do? And I would be annoyed if someone did tell me exactly how many rows to do, but honestly, for the stem, you can just make it however long you feel like. I don't know if it's outside, but I keep hearing this little buzzy noise. And I think, it, I don't know if it's the light I'm using or if it's outside, but I hear it. And I honestly think it's outside. Well, we're just gonna keep going around until the stem is however long we feel like it should be. And it should just take me a second to get it to whatever length it is that I want it. But I do need it to be a little bit longer. There you go. I feel like I was very rambly in this tutorial. I am so sorry. Some days when I'm studying a lot, I don't really talk to anyone. And man, I don't know. I just get really talkative. So, sorry about that, but not sorry. I had fun. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my rambling. I feel like if you watch a lot of my tutorials, you gotta be used to the rambling by now. You probably know a little too much about me. So that's fun. I think we're almost there. I'm gonna make the stem a little bit longer and then I think, I think we're done. And then I'll show you how to do his little um, leaves and then I'll, we'll do the face and then our flowers are done. I don't know, there's something so satisfy sa satisfying about finishing something. So, yeah. I also have a bunch of flowers I haven't taken photo of. Like I haven't posted any any of these flowers except for the first one on Instagram. Like, I'm gonna need to take some photos. Oh, I'll also show you that cute thing I made that is gonna, that hasn't even been on Instagram yet, because it is so cute. I'm excited to show it to you. Okay, so I think that's how long I want my stem to be. So once you've decided your stem is long enough for your liking, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up the next two loops as if you were gonna decrease, but instead we're just gonna tie it off. So we're gonna pull it through everything on our hook, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. We'll go ahead and tuck the tail into the stem. So like that. And then there's our stem. So I'm gonna show you how to do the leaves real quick. It's pretty simple. Um, all we're gonna do so we're pretty much just gonna make a magic ring with six um, stitches in it and then we just tie them into our stem and that's it just picking up some bands so I'll show you how to make one you can make the other one you can just pause the video and make the other one when you want to make the other one or you can give your yeah I usually make two but you can definitely give your daisy however many leaves you want so we're gonna start by wrapping a band three times around our hook so we have one two, three, then we're gonna pull the band through, both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, we're gonna go back into the cat band, then we're gonna pull a band through just the cat band, push the back one over the front one, push the loop from last time over, and then we're gonna go ahead and put four more stitches into this cat band because technically we already have two, and then that's pretty much it for our leaf. But yeah, we're pretty much just making a magic ring with six stitches in it. 
honestly don't know why they're called a magic ring. I usually don't call them a magic ring in my tutorials, but for those of you who do know, go by those terms, that is pretty much what we're doing. So once you have six stitches in your cap band, you're just gonna wanna count to make sure. The camera would focus. So we'll count, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we're just gonna go through this first loop here, pull a band through everything on our hook, and we're just gonna use this band to tie our leaf into our daisy. Ah, stop. And we'll just tie our leaf in. And then that's pretty much it. I would make one more just because I want my daisy to have two leaves, but yeah, you can go ahead and pause the video to make the other one. I'll make the other leaf in a second. But yeah, you can go ahead and pause the video to make the other leaf. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do the face real quick. So all of my daisies have faces. That's just a thing I do. So you're gonna wanna get whatever you want for your eyes. Um, you could use a band, but I'm gonna be using beads today. So I have my two beads. And then I like to give my flowers cheeks. So you'll get two bands in the color of your cheeks. And then all you're gonna need is a piece of string. Um, I use dental floss because it just works the best for whatever reason. And you're just gonna place the band on the floss. Then you're going to slide your bead on. So we'll just slide our bead onto that piece of floss. I actually put the band on the wrong side. So you're going to want to make sure that the band is on this side of the bead. Then you're going to go back through your bead and slide it onto that band. And then we'll use this band to tie our eye to our flower. Um, but if you don't have beads, you could use a black band. You could wrap a black band four or five times around your hook and pull a band through and it will work exactly the same as, an, as a bead. Um, you could use safety eyes if you have safety eyes or anything else you want to use. I don't know what else. You know, googly eyes on these flowers would also probably be cute if someone glued some googly eyes on them. Just an idea. But yeah. So we're just going to tie our eyes in really quick. We're gonna come right here and we're gonna tie our eye in. Oh. And I'm gonna put the other eye right here. And I know I tied the other one a little fast so I'll go a little slower but you kind of just pull it in, pull it through up to where the eye is, grab the other side and then just pull it tight. An important thing with eye beads, especially if you're using beads, is holding onto the bead a little bit when you pull it tight. Because sometimes the eye will want to slip into the creation. So just hold on to it. And I'm tucking the tails in off camera because I don't have the patience. <laughs> I've been doing, doing tutorials for what, five plus years now and I still can't tuck tails in on camera. Even with my better camera, it's just such a pain and I just don't ever have the patience for it. Like I'll show you guys how to do it one time, but after that, I am tucking him in off camera. <laughs> okay, so the last step is just to put some cheeks on our guy. And I like to come right under where the eye is. And then I'll just pull a band through in the color I want my cheek to be. Then we'll put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and you're gonna pull it tight, but not super tight. And then you'll just hide this tail in. And it'll look like a cheek. That was a horrible job I did of hiding the tail in. <laughs> now it looks like a cheek. And we'll come to the other eye and we'll do the same thing. Just tie it off. And then just tuck it in. And then that's pretty much it for this flower. I, I know all my flowers have mouths, but if you want to glue a mouth on your flower, all you're going to want to do is cut a black band. I usually use hot glue and I'll just put a dot of hot glue on the face and then I'll just set the mouth onto the dot of hot glue and that's how I usually glue, glue my mouth on. But I'm not gonna show you that in this tutorial because I will 100% get burned. So I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, my flower looks really cute. I'm gonna give him his other leaf uh, off camera, but you get the idea. 
So I hope your flower came out okay. This felt like such a quick tutorial probably because it kind of was. I've been, I think I did a long one recently, so yeah. Um, if you make one of my flowers designs, I would love to see it. Definitely share it with me on Instagram. Um, I'm gonna go grab the thing I wanted to show you real quick. Okay, so some preview of some stuff that's coming. The next tutorial that will be out will be for this dinosaur um, that Zimmy Looms designed, but she's letting me make a tutorial for it. And I think this is such a cute design. So that'll be coming next, but I made this other thing. I literally made this this morning and I think it's adorable. I have to post it, but it's a baby cow. It's so little. I don't know if you guys can tell how small it is. I literally made this this morning and I was like, it's adorable. Um, but yeah, here's my regular size cow in comparison with this tiny cow. So he is significantly smaller. It's a baby. I think this is as baby of a cow as I could possibly make. So maybe a tutorial for a baby cow coming to the tutorial sometime soon. I feel like it's kind of hard to show on camera just how little he is, but in real life he is, he is tiny. Um, so yeah, all that will be coming to my channel soon eventually at some point. <laughs> subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. I always have more rain bloom videos and just other videos coming. Definitely subscribe if you want to see if I go live and keep up with the community tab because that is where I'm going to be posting the day I'll go live. As well as if you follow me on Instagram, you can see what I'm up to. Um, my Instagram is linked down below if you want to see what designs are coming. Instagram usually sees designs first. They also see all of my painting crises in school because I usually post what I'm up to in school in there because I'm an art major and I do a lot of art things so I share what I'm making. Um, but yeah, I think that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope your flower came out okay. Don't forget to share them with me, but um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.